this is the first in a series of videos in which I will be attempting to resurrect this. As you can see, it is a PDP-8M. There's a lot of information about the PDP-8 machines online, so unless you want me to, I won't uh, duplicate that and go into too much explanation as to how all the circuits work. If you want me to go into that in detail, then let me know. But the PDP-8 has got quite a long history. The first PDP-8 um, looked nothing like this. It was a, a huge machine about the size of a fridge, um, more typical of the uh, computers you see in kind of 1960s films. And um, it was just that. It was a, a huge machine. It was uh, very discreet in design and uh, cost a fortune. Uh, back then it was about $18,000 and uh, that's equivalent to about $160,000, $170,000 in today's money. Um, it was relatively capable. It had a, a very simple instruction set, so it was quite easy to program. And they kind of retained uh, that compatibility throughout the life of the uh, PDP-8. And it went through several iterations. It um, went through a serial version, that was the PDP-8S, similar in architecture to the HP calculators that I've shown in previous videos, uh, but far more capable. And then it went back through to uh, more traditional parallel operation. And uh, the M is really um, a version of the E. And uh, as I say, I won't go into too much detail, at least not in this video, as to exactly how the overall machine works. Uh, also is very upgradable. This is kind of equivalent to the um, the Altair 8800 type. Uh, not so much the way they operate but the interface type, the way they could be upgraded, the way they consisted of various discrete cards. Um, but they were also very discreet in design in that um, the processor cards, all the memory cards, the interface cards, very discreet design and uh, that's what makes them so interesting. So uh, the original PDP-8 was designed, built back in about uh, 1965. Um, the M came along in about 1972 and something like this, depending on how it was configured, how much memory it had, would cost around $5,000, so uh, about £20,000, £25,000 uh, in today's money. And um, as I say, it has lots of options, and what we're going to be doing with this machine is seeing if we can get it to run. And ultimately, I'd like to hook it up to uh, some core memory and see if we can get it to uh, run some core memory, write a few programs for it, and uh, as I say, see if we can get it to work properly. But Step one is um, we'll have a look inside. I've got no idea what state this machine's in. I don't even know if it's complete, so uh, we'll have a look inside, see what's in there, and uh, go from there. It's not my machine. I'm repairing this for someone else, uh, but I suspect this might be quite a long series of videos. Um, I'm not going to just uh, power it on and plug it in because I don't want to uh, destroy it. I suspect it's probably plugged in anyway, but. Uh, I'm not going to add to the carnage. Um, but uh, first step is we'll get the top cover off, we'll have a look inside and see what uh, condition it's in. In fact, before we do that, we'll spin it round, have a look at the back panel. Uh, there's quite often some interesting information on the back of this. I haven't really looked at this yet, but I did notice there was a, a sticker on there with some writing on, so we'll have a look at that first and see if there's anything interesting. Okay, so looking at the back, it's in reasonably good condition, it's not too beaten up. Um, we can see here, this gives a list of the cards and um, any accessories that have been added to this. We can see here where it says uh, Omnibus, this is a reference to the backplane bus that's used in these machines and again the developers were very consistent with that, they uh, kind of retained a very common interface uh, for the back plane for uh, all the cards that we used. Again, similar to the S100 uh, bus idea in that the um, pins on the cards all had uh, predefined functions and it made it very easy to fault find and work on these. 
Uh, we've got the usual uh, openings and slots for the various interface cards that could be fitted, uh, lab ribbon cables and whatever uh, else to be connected quite easily. Um, but uh, as I say, quite uh, nice condition. It's, uh, normally these are in very poor state when you get them, but uh, let's have a look inside and see if uh, it's as good inside as it is on the outside. Okay, so looking inside, it doesn't look too bad at all. Um, something's been going on here with the power supply connectors, um, but I can deal with that um, as we come to them. It looks like some just been pulled off, but uh, I'll trace the power through. This is why I don't power these things up. Uh, we don't know what this was touching or what would have happened, but uh, we need to figure out what state the power supply is in before we power it up anyway. Um, now, the architecture of these is very interesting it's very discreet and by the time they got to the M version they were using um, almost entirely 7.4 TTL logic devices if you've seen my videos on the HP calculator then the general architecture of these the way that they're subdivided is, is quite similar in that um, the different cards have specific functions within a discrete processor design one thing I have noticed with this is that um, the Terminator card isn't in the right slot. It probably doesn't really matter, but um, we'll come to that in a later video. The rest of the cards, uh, they're generally in the same layout, but it's in theory it shouldn't matter that much. In practice, uh, some of the cards tend to not work too well if you move them around. Again, similar to the way the Altairs behave. So we'll take the cards out one by one, have a quick look at them, and uh, see if we can try and estimate uh, the general condition of this. It won't tell us if it works, of course, but um, we're looking for corrosion or uh, physical damage to the card. So we'll start at the second card. The first card is the display card, switch card, and uh, I'll leave that in for now. Um, but we'll pop the first card out. So you can see these all flop around. Normally the top panel has some foam on the inside that uh, supports these, but uh, it tends to fall apart over time and these flop around which is why they tend to end up distorted like this. Uh, it doesn't stop them working most of the time but um, as I say we'll test each card in turn. So the first card that we're going to take out is the uh, timing control generator card. This essentially generates the clocks and timing signals for the processor. So we'll pop that out. And as you can see, it's a very discreet design. Looks in good condition, needs a bit of a clean, but uh, there's no sign of any corrosion on here. And it does not look like anyone's done too much in uh, terms of modification, so that's, uh, that's quite nice. Okay, so the next card we're looking at, there's two here that work really as a pair. These are um, part of the processor uh, core. So the first one on the right, it's labelled here as M8300 and that is the main registers for the CPU. The one next to it is the uh, register control card, that's uh, M8310. And these two kind of work together as the uh, central core registers for the CPU. So I'll just pop these out. They've got a links across the top so anytime the cards need uh, links to join them or connections between them that aren't part of the uh, main bus, the omnibus, then it uses connections like this or can even use connections that are uh, completely uh, unrelated to the general design. Okay, so we'll pop these two bridges off and then we'll pop out the main register card. And again, looks to be in very good condition. Okay, and again, I can't see any repairs or modifications to that card either. We'll take out the register control card. Same with that. 
must be in good uh, condition so it's looking good so far I doubt this works but um, at least it hasn't been so heavily modified and there's no real signs of uh, any serious corrosion on here okay the next cards so that's the register cards that's that forms the core with the timing and the uh, registers that forms the core of a CPU the next one uh, is not really electronics at all this is just uh, an RF shield the these cards being so big and old circuits like this are fairly susceptible to uh, RF interference uh, all these cards being so big and stacked next to each other generally caused interference especially with the uh, memory systems that were being used in them so the cards that sit between the CPU core and the rest of the system this, this is labelled uh, M849 by the way is nothing more than an RF shield such as the shielding plate in effect uh, that's uh, on a piece of uh, PCB okay so the next one is the this is the card that normally I would have expected to see at the back end of the bus this is the bus termination bus loading so this is meant to uh, eliminate any noise and RF uh, reflections or any problems on the omnibus. So really it's nothing more than a series of loads. The only thing that concerns me a little bit is some of these have been getting quite hot. It's not that unusual but uh, I think at least some of these resistors will need replacing. You can see on the back. These aren't uh, too bad, these are kind of bigger resistors and they do tend to generate a lot of heat, but down here I wouldn't normally expect to see so much discolouring on the board. Coughing a little bit, but not to this extent. But other than that, it looks to be in good condition, so it's unlikely we'll get too many problems with this. Um, things like the capacitors we'll need to check. Uh, they do have a tendency to go dead short on these. Um, these are tantalum capacitors, so. Uh, sure you're all aware that they can be a bit problematic okay the next card I won't look into just at the moment this is an option card so we'll look at this and I'll explain what this is in a future video it's not really something we need to be too concerned about just at the moment in fact it gives you some clue here as to uh, the fact that it's uh, an option card Okay, now the next car is labelled M837. This is a uh, memory extension, so this allows um, data to be passed between the CPU and the memory system. And again, we'll look at these in more detail as we do t various testing and write some programs for them. Um, got a jumper down here, but that's uh, fairly typical. We've got a few on here that's not that unusual on these cards and um, other than that it looks fine. I can't see any major repairs that have been carried out. Looks like somebody's been soldering something onto that capacitor or it's got a problem. But again no serious corrosion. Looks like a bit of work's been done on here so there's um, Something's been going on here. I can't see any other issues, so it doesn't look, uh, again, like there's been too much in terms of modification. Next three boards are memory, uh, memory options. So this is really where the uh, these range of machines became very interesting. They had a whole range of different memory options available to them. We'll just pop the cards out and have a quick look at them. So, see we have got a bit of wildlife in here as well. So, so the first card. So these three cards work together and um, form a memory option for the machine. And um, it's been getting fairly hot, but I can't see anything particularly drastic with it. Pop the 
other two bridges out. Take out the central card. Now, this is the thing really that I find most interesting with the uh, CP8 machines and that uh, they had core memory. And if you are interested in vintage uh, computer systems, then this is kind of the era where things really started to accelerate with um, microcontrollers, microprocessors, computer systems. This is the core, this is where all the data was actually stored and there were various options in terms of capacity for these machines and you could fit multiple uh, memory cards. But uh, although you can't see it, we'll look at this under, under a microscope in a future video. Although you can't see it, this has uh, thousands of tiny um, ferrite cores. And as I say, we'll have a look at that in more detail in a future video. But this is uh, where these machines really start to get interesting. And then, of course, to make that work, we need the various um, amplifiers and switching circuits to detect the status of any particular core in that uh, memory card. And that's what the three cards do. The center one is the uh, where the data is uh, stored and the other two cards that are on either side of it are used to control and read data into and out of that core. Uh, if you're interested, we've got a date here. It says May the 10th. 1972, so I thought it said 1912 there, I thought that's uh, unusual, but no, it says uh, 1972. Again, no signs of any major hacking around. A lot of these that I get, there have been all sorts going on with them and um, it can be quite a task getting them back to original form, but uh, this has been quite promising so far. Uh, and then the last one is uh, another option. So uh, this is M847. So this is, uh, again, we'll look at this in a, a future video. But um, Okay, so that's the main cards removed. The back plane doesn't look too bad. It's very dirty. I'll need to take that out and give it a very good clean. Figure out what's going on with the power connectors. We've got some more here that had been uh, disconnected uh, whether that's because there was a fault somewhere and someone was trying to fault find or whether there's a fault with the power supply I'm not quite sure um, but what I'll do in the next video is we'll completely strip the chassis um, there is some damage to it there's some um, bent fins on this that need straightening out and uh, I'll take the power supply out so we'll take the display card out give the chassis really good clean and we'll test the power supply and see if that's working uh, but the general goal is to try and get this uh, fully functional um, we'll hook it up to the dumb terminal the ADM3 terminal and see if we can get it to run but uh, I suspect this might be quite a long uh, series of videos but uh, uh, any comments, questions, anything in particular you want me to go into in more detail as we go through this, then please leave a comment.